there. All right, so once again, this is another event hosted by the Disability Advisory Committee, the DAC Committee. Uh, this, this time we have the Department of Rehabilitation and they will be presenting disability etiquette and awareness. And I, this, it's such an appropriate theme because we are now in the, with October is National Disability, National Disability Employment Awareness Month. So I thank you for being able to join us. And we have Matthew Tapia, is that correct? You got it. Uh, Spencer Hoke and Joanne Cummins all from Department of Rehab. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off my, mute my speaker and turn everything over to Matt. All right, uh, thank you very much, Peggy, for inviting us and Jessica as well. Um, you know, uh, this is a presentation we love doing, uh, uh, this disability and etiquette and awareness training. Uh, first off, we'll start with some introductions. My name is Matthew Tapia. I am a business specialist out of the Capital Mall branch of the Department of Rehabilitation. And uh, Joanne, want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Thank you, Matthew, Matt. Hi, my name is Joanne Cummins. I too am a business specialist with the California Department of Rehabilitation. I work out of the Chico, um, excuse me, I work out of the Yuba City office in Woodland and I do assist with the Chico and Laguna branches. And I'll go ahead and hand this one over to Spencer as well. Spencer. All right, thank you. Hello everyone, microphone check. Um, I'm happy to be here. It's a great opportunity to come in and see everyone and really to see the DAC team. We just wanna give you a big shout out as the DAC you're doing what we're trying to do across the board. So we want to continue encouraging you and any opportunity we can have to come in and support you, we do that. So I'm Spencer. I'm part of the business specialist team. Um, I work out of the Sacramento, Fair Oaks, um, and Auburn offices. So I appreciate uh, everybody letting us come on. Thank you. All right. So I will take over from here. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my presentation. I guess our presentation, just one second. All right, is that showing up for everybody? Yes. Great, so again, we are the business specialist team uh, in the Northern Sierra District. We work collaboratively, uh, collaboratively uh, across the district on uh, special projects, and we do presentations like this, a disability etiquette training. Uh, so let's go on to the next slide. First, we're gonna start off with a video. And uh, this is going to kind of kick it off, get us in the mood to talk about uh, disability etiquette and awareness. Uh, so I'm going to start the video and please let me know if you can't hear the sound. I think I hit the checkbox, but who knows. Good morning, Bob. Good morning there, big man. Morning, Alice! There's no need to be awkward. Poor Bob. Like so many of us, he just doesn't know how to interact with people with disabilities. It's pretty easy, really. People with disabilities are people first. We need the same things that every person needs, like respect. Good morning, everyone. Attention! Uh, okay. Maybe we need to be more specific. The easiest way to show respect is to focus on the person, not the disability. It's okay. You'll get the hang of it. One easy way to focus on the person is to watch the person signing and not their interpreter. Or their companion. It's really cool that you'd like to help. But do us both a favor and please ask me first. What you think might be helping? I got you. Wait, wait, ah! Oh no, might actually not. If you'd like to offer me help, let me hold on to your elbow. Don't take mine. Hey, would you like to take mine? Sure. <laughs> Assistive devices help us to live our lives. They're really important and really personal. Grabbing them only makes it weird for everyone. What? Please only touch our devices and service animals if we've given you permission. 
And don't take it personally if I ask you not to. Remember that my service animal helps me all the time. Neither of us would like it if we were separated. Remember, we make our own decisions. We sign documents, vote, volunteer, work, and pay taxes. We get married. So don't touch me just because I have a great smile. Just because I'm blind. May I help you? Does not mean I'm deaf. Just because I'm deaf doesn't mean I'm blind. And just because I use a wheelchair doesn't mean that I can't sweep you off your feet. So take a deep breath, relax. We don't bite. Unless we're really hungry. Other ladies, how are you? Hello. And if you're not sure what to do, just ask. Hi, would you still like to see a menu? Uh, no thanks, but can you please read it to me? Sure, definitely. Just treat us the way you would want to be treated, and we'll all be okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Alice. Good morning. Awkward no more. Nice job, Bob. Go forth and be human. There's no need to be awkward. All right. Um, I love the story of Bob. He's a, a great individual. I feel like at one time I was Bob. Uh, you know, I, I grew up with the advantage of uh, having people with disabilities in my household. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't exposed to every uh, disability out there. So there is a little bit of a learning curve sometimes. Uh, first off, I want to start with this disclaimer. Information material and our technical assistance are intended solely as informational guidance and are neither a determination of your legal rights or responsibility under the ADA, nor binding in, on any agency with enforcement responsibility under the ADA. All right. Uh, so here's a quote by Milt Wright and Associates. I don't know if you're familiar with Milt Wright, uh, but they are the uh, organization that created the windmills training. That's another training that we love doing. Uh, but I love this quote, there are no good jobs for people with disabilities, but there are people with disabilities who are good for jobs. Uh, you know, it's all about skills and what they bring to the table. Uh, so a little bit about the uh, people with disabilities that people were talking about. So people with disabilities are the largest untapped workforce in the world. Uh, they have the most underutilized spending and voting power. And this is no truer of a statement. Uh, there is people with disabilities in all uh, walks of life and all aspects of our of our lives. Uh, and they can also uh, often be overlooked. Um, you know, there is a little bit of a stigma associated with uh, people with disabilities. Uh, so the, for the Centers of Disease Control uh, statistics, approximately 61 million or 26% of adults in the US live with some type of disability. Uh, that's one out of every four people. Uh, 23 adults, 23% uh, of adults living in California have a disability as well. Uh, so there's a good part of our population, uh, you know, one in four, that is a quarter. Uh, also from the Centers uh, of, Disease Control, uh, of Disease Control and Prevention, disability is especially common in adults uh, age 65 and older. Uh, that's two out of five. And also uh, one out of four women have a disability. So again, we're talking uh, large numbers of, of, of people here. Uh, the income controlled by people with disabilities uh, equates to about 20, uh, 220 billion in the U.S. and three trillion worldwide. Uh, so there is a quite an amount of spending power associated with people with disabilities. Uh, when we're talking about people with disabilities, there are also stakeholders uh, associated with those people with disabilities. Uh, they, could, they could be family members, they could be friends, or just others who care about people with disabilities. Uh, the spending power of two billion people uh, and eight, or two billion, <laughs> I think people is wrong there, uh, eight trillion plus uh, in disposable income annually. Uh, next, we're going to talk about etiquette. Like I said, I was once Bob uh, when it came to certain uh, people with disabilities. Uh, so when we're thinking about etiquette, it's all about inclusiveness. Uh, you know, it, someone may, you know, require an AT device or, you know, they may look a little bit different than us. 
uh, but it's all about being inclusive and, you know, and employees and customers with disabilities, they feel more comfortable. And that comes with education. It comes with just uh, knowledge. When we're talking about etiquette, we're talking about basic human courtesy. Um, and from that, we get increased work, pro work productivity. Uh, and it could also be a huge new uh, source of new clients, uh, customers and employees. And, you know, it just makes good business sense. It makes sense to tap into that huge population of, of our, uh, you know, of, of, of people there. Uh, here we have a little graphic, the way in, everyone welcome. So is this person welcome? You know, that's something to think about. So we're kind of trying to, uh, you know, shift our per perception a little bit when we're talking about inclu inclusivity. Uh, so is everyone welcome if there is no accessibility there? Uh, next, we're going to go into the specific disabilities. Uh, so we're going to give you some information about uh, specific disabilities and, uh, you know, just a few tips on those. Uh, this is all about etiquette for interacting with individuals with various disabilities. And keep in mind, not every individual with a disability requires the same type or level of support. Uh, with all things, you know, there is a spectrum. Uh, I love talking about mobility disability because I live with a mobility disability. Uh, I, mobility disability, disability is described a person's inability to use uh, one or more of their extremities. In my case, that's my, uh, that's my leg, uh, right leg, and sometimes both. Mobility devices are part of someone's personal space. And oftentimes I use a cane uh, and it would be very, uh, very difficult for me to, to, to walk around without it. Uh, so, you know, it is a part of me when I'm using it and, uh, you know, it's, it's important to never, uh, you know, interact with that piece, that device when I'm using it. Uh, so it's never lean or push on wheelchairs if somebody has a wheelchair, um, you know, keeping paths accessible to travel around the workspace. It's something that we all need to think about. Uh, adjust equipment and supplies to fit within reach, uh, reach ranges. So if you have a new employee coming in uh, who, who is a person in a wheelchair, that's something to think about while uh, you know configuring their uh, their workspace. Uh, when conversing, bring yourself down to eye level. Uh, it's you know if you're having a long conversation with somebody, uh, it's a little bit awkward all around to just kind of be looking down, uh, and it just doesn't really help to the communication uh, when you're looking down on someone. Uh, so it's just a good idea to to look look a uh, someone in the eye on their level. Um, and then also, this is common sense, remove clutter to avoid falls. That's just good information for everyone. Next, we have a little graphic here. Hi, it's been so long since I met her. Oh yeah. So this little graphic just illustrates the importance of inclusivity, uh, of, of making sure that we're, you know, not talking about people if when they're around us, uh, you know, and then bringing them into the conversation, coming into eye level. Uh, next, another colleague is going to take it from here and talk about blindness. Hey, Matt, I'm going to jump in on this one. All right. Good to see everyone. We're glad you're here. Hey, if you see something you like or there's something that we say, use the reactions. We get a kick out of that. For those of you who are on here or trainers, you know that makes a difference. Wave your hand. Give us a, a thumbs up. Throw the goat out if you think greatest of all time. We love seeing those. So continue uh, being a part of us on this with us and uh, give us that feedback. So, so blindness. Um, and vision loss. So as we know, there's varying, um, there's varying degrees of visual disabilities. So there's anyone who could be an individual who's blind or an individual who has vision loss or low vision. Um, one thing that we wanna encourage is with, we want inclusivity across the board. And so if there's an individual who maybe would utilize or work better with um, larger print, maybe a different type of materials, could be braille, could be some sort of form or audio. We've changed a lot since we've been using uh, Teams, Zoom, a lot of the other virtual uh, assistive technologies. So we've grown a lot out of the pandemic. It's been challenging, but there have been a lot of positive um, resources that have come from that. And so these are some of the things that are helping individuals with disabilities. Um, when you're communicating with a person who is, is blind, one of the most important things is to identify yourself. Let them know who you are. If you walk up to somebody, you don't want to just tap them or tackle them or say, hey, it's Spencer, I'm coming up right behind you or I'm up on the left. Um, speak with that person directly, regardless if you think they're looking at you or not, can speak to them, not around them, uh, you know, give them the respect that you would like to have. 
um, offer. So we saw this in the, uh, in, the, in the recording, offer your arm, don't grab theirs. We just did a training with our, our, our friends from uh, Society for the Blind. If you know Shane Snyder on here, give a shout out, put the hands up. Um, Shane just came in and did a presentation, an Indeem presentation with us. And that was one of the things he said. He said, I do not want to be grabbed. I, do, I don't expect somebody to come up, grab my arm and walk around with me. I feel the same way. Um, so I totally agree on, on that regard. Um, when you're stepping away or leaving, let the individual know. We, we, as a team, we were watching a training one time and we saw a person who was sitting having a conversation with somebody else. The other individual walked away and had been gone for a little bit. The person that came back in was a new person. So the individual was having a conversation that they had with the other individual and it just threw everyone off. So it was kind of an awkward situation. So uh, like Bob, we wanna to try to avoid that awkwardness as much as we can. Uh, we know these, if, if you're at a new workplace or if things have changed, um, in my office, we have, we have a small business complex. One of the businesses continues to put uh, cardboard boxes, garbage bags um, out just across the hallway. And one of the things that's the most challenging for us, we, I can see it when I'm coming through, but an individual who comes in who's blind or maybe has uh, a low vision may not see those things. And so we're encouraging that they keep an eye on what's out there. If something, um, if there's not a place or not a garbage nearby, find another place that's not gonna be in the common area for folks to, um, to trip on. And that's the same with if you're changing the facility or there's a different layout, let people know, keeping that communication with them. Or next slide. Thank you. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at a couple of different images that an individual who falls under a, uh, maybe a vision disability may see. Uh, so right now we're looking at normal. So some of you are probably sitting out here saying, well, what is normal? We ask that question all the time. My kids ask me that question all the time. They say, dad, you're the most normal person I know. They've never said that to me once. So if, uh, if you know me well, you know that's, that's not the, the case here. But typically normal, we're not seeing anything across this picture differently than then, uh, well, it's, it's an image of two young boys, two uh, playing balls and hugging each other. And we can, um, we're able to see that pretty clearly. Uh, Matt, you wanna go to the next one? So the next slide is glaucoma. So you can see what's happening here. The vision, if you're able to see this, it's changed a little bit as opposed to seeing the whole picture clearly. We're kind of only coming in and seeing that internal, that mid space. So glaucoma is actually something that's pretty close to home to me right now. One of my peers uh, just had to go through a, a surgery, uh, the laser surgery for glaucoma. And we thought that was pretty strange because he's pretty young. But one of the things that it kept, it was a reminder to us is that those doctor's visits, those check-ins, those, if you have, if you have headaches, if you have pain, if you have, any of those things that are going on, check those, anything that's not normal or typical with your doctor. Um, so glaucoma is due to high blood pressure, um, the biggest thing about this, it's, it's kind of a tricky one. There's no real symptoms. Um, if there's somebody on here who has glaucoma and you, ha you, you, ha you notice some symptoms, but there's no real specific symptoms that a doctor's gonna say, yeah, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen, and then this is gonna happen. It just tends to be slow vision loss. And so treatment does happen. As I mentioned, my peer, um, he ended up having surgery, um, but also medication and drops um, could be a result of that as well. And I'll keep moving on. Uh, cataracts is another one. If you're able to see the screen, you're seeing that it's normal. Um, it's not normal clearness. I keep using that word normal. It's not the clearness that we're seeing. So a cataract is mostly like a, um, like looking into a, a, a window that has been rained or has been steamed on. As you can see here, it's uh, the clarity goes away. It's blurry vision. And so having cataracts, it's again, it's kind of like looking through that cloudy or steamed up window. Um, this is something that could be fixed. Generally, uh, individuals um, can, can uh, have this taken care of through an outpatient process. And so um, something that develops over time, uh, most cataracts develop slowly over time and it's not something that will hit directly at, uh, at an individual. All right, Matt. All right, so diabetic, retinopathy. So this is a word I say wrong probably three out of 10 times. So I think we're, we're good on that one. But this is one that, again, another close to home, um, one of my peers who's in her mid thirties, um, an individual who has diabetes is actually onset for some uh, vision issues. And she's noticed that she's had to change her 
eyeglass, uh, her prescription um, several times in the last 10, 15 years, uh, just because of her, um, what do I say? The, the tissue in the back of her retina is, is continuing to be damaged. And so these are some of the things that we're looking at with, with eye vision. Um, again, individuals who are, are blind or low vision, it's a spectrum. It's not one fits all, uh, but uh, diabetic re retinopathy um, is caused by an individual who has uh, diabetes um, that affects their eyes. And then one more, Matt. All right, and myop myopia. So myopia is one, I like this word, but every time we come in here, Matt always reminds us that this is nearsightedness. Um, and nearsightedness is one that is, uh, it, it could be a condition that's hereditary. Um, also, it's something that could be cured with treatment. Some of the treatments could be glasses. Um, individuals who have um, nearsightedness could wear gla glasses, contact lens, or even surgery. We've heard that happen a lot more in the last 20 years where individuals are going through and correcting that vision. So um, this condition is when an object seems, uh, appears clear, let's see, when a close object appears clear, but one far away, um, it, it doesn't seem clear. Was that clear? I know you guys probably could give me more information on that, but, um, but those are some of the, again, some of the ideas of vision. You're mute. My apologies. I apologize, everyone. So we're going to pick up on deaf and hard of hearing, and we're going to cover some do's and don'ts. So in this graphic picture, we see a couple of do's and don'ts, you know, suggested by that deaf guy. So, you know, I'm saying let's be deaf wise. So on the second picture, it says do try to communicate with the deaf person by using facial express expressions. And you know the don't would be don't shout at a deaf person hoping that they will hear you because they do see those facial expressions as you're yelling as well. So in addition uh, to that, we have you know such as use natural gestures. You know, do use natural uh, natural gestures and don't shout again. You know because it distorts your face again in your mouth and can be can be painful painful for hearing aid. Um, wearers as well. So ensure your face is in good light. You know, you can stand with the um, stand with the window bright light behind you. Um, do keep your mouth visible. Don't cover your mouth because the, the individual that is trying to read, you could be reading your lips and if they can't read your lips, it's because, you know, it's distorted by a, a, a covering. So, you know, keep that in mind when you are wearing a mask outdoors and you are communicating with someone who, who is deaf and hard of hearing. Um, then we're going to go to slide 22, Matt, next slide. So now we have the deaf and hard of hearing. There's different modes of communication, such as sign language and lip reading, et cetera. Um, ask the individual what their preferred mode is, you know, or you can always get their attention, you know, face the person and offer an unobstructed view of their mouth, such as I was saying, um, you know, a mouth covering can be obstructive to the mouth, uh, so making it difficult for the individual to read. Speak directly to the person and always maintain eye, can eye contact with the individuals. Use facial expressions and body language to convey tone. Um, again, you know, um, when you're yelling, your facial expressions can be a little distorted, so try not to, you know, speak loudly, but you can use your facial expressions and your body language because they do convey. Develop a comfort in using video relay services or email. You know, a lot of us do work with these, some of these um, devices. A lot of our coworkers work with a lot of devices. So, you know, we want to, you know, try to develop a comfort in, with these devices as well. And consider having team members learn some basic sign language. I know like for myself, my coworker, she is deaf. And so um, she does hear with some, when she does have her hearing aids on. But, you know, I think it would be even better if I tried to learn her language. So, you know, if you can consider, you know, taking some courses or learning some sign language, that would be great as far as communication. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So. With this, and we're showing a graphic picture of one person sitting across a desk um, saying to another person who is deaf of hard of hearing, hard of hearing um, I understand some of you people can uh, lip read, you know, so that could be an understatement, you know. Next slide. 
Hey, and real quickly, Joanne, there was a question in the chat, Matt. I don't know if you want us to wait till the end or if you wanted to take questions that came up. Uh, yeah, maybe wait till the end because I, okay. I won't be able to monitor it actually. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, Ronald, we're going to come back to you at the end for questions and answers. So, so I'm actually going to, I'm going to take service animal here. Um, modify no pet policy that allows service animals in the workplace. Um, that happens a lot. So a lot of times there's a lot of questions and we can go into this one in, in much more depth. Um, but we've actually had questions from either CHP or sheriffs that have reached out to us and said, look, we're having these events and people are showing up with their animals and it's all kinds of different animals. What can we do? What can we ask for? What can we say? Um, and so one of the biggest things that we, we, you know, we want to know is that that animal is in service to a person with a disability, if that's uh, a person with a physical disability, mental, vision, uh, emotional, uh, supporting that individual. Um, most animal lovers want to go up and touch every animal that they can. Uh, that they can. I was just in Home Depot the other day. That's not a um, you know push or a plug for Home Depot, but there was an individual walking around with a newer service animal. And so one of the associates came up and said, oh, I really love your dog. And the individual tried to get him to come over and um, re, um, meet or interact with the associate. And I thought, OK, well, that's not normally a typical uh, thing that we would do when we're training our service animals. But the animal was a little nervous and, and shy. So I thought that's good if that's not quite where it's at yet. Uh, but the idea is ask before touching an animal. These individuals, these animals are working just like we are. Every time the individuals that they're with, that they're serving are working, they're working. Um, do not pet or distract an animal. Uh, do not offer foods or treats to the animal without permission. And so sometimes this is, a, you know, it could just be something you don't know. It doesn't mean that people are bad. A lot of times they just don't know. When you see an animal, sometimes you think, oh, cool. I have some, you know, some treats or some cookies or something I wanna share. But keep in mind that that animal is just working the same way that you and I are for that person they're serving. Next slide. And okay. then. Did you want me to take this one, Spencer? Did do you want to take this? Good, Joanne. Okay, so now we're going into speech difficulties. Um, was, um, Speech difficulties give the person your full attention. Uh, don't complete the sentences for them. I know that I'm pretty guilty for this one. You know, I try to fill in the gaps, and so and I, I, you know, it it can be rude. So don't don't complete the sentences. Give them the opportunity. Ask to repeat if you do not understand. Someone who has a speech um, who has a speech difficulty, um, just ask to repeat. They would respect that more. And again, repeat back. And so, you know, what you've heard, and if you're thinking you're having some difficulties understanding, repeat back and get the verification, you know, verify that that's what they're saying. I mean, they validate what they are speaking on. Um, ask them to write information down. If you're having a hard time communicating with them, you know, hand them a pencil and a pad and let them write the information down um, and minimize all distractions and background noise. That's That could be there never tease or laugh because they do sense that. So I have um, my, uh, I work with a counselor who is deaf and hard of hearing. And so, you know, I had to try to, you know, speak to her on a certain level to where she understands me and it's not me doing all the understanding. It's a, it's a mutual conversation between the two of us. So, you know, I have to give her that respect and, and try to speak with her. And so she understands and we both understand. Next slide, please. Uh, mental health. So we have, um, there are different psychiatric conditions that are associated with mental health conditions. Um, there's try to maintain manageable stress levels and uh, minimize any distractions. Do not give unsolicited advice or assistance. Do not blame the person. Question the accuracy of the media stereotypes of mental illnesses and see the person, not the disability. We want to make sure that we're or seeing the individual themselves. Eliminate any stigma in the workplace that through education. You know, other mental health um, can include um, emotional, psych psychological, and social well being. It affects how we think and how we act. And it also helps determine how we can handle stress, mood disorders, you know, such as depression or bipo bipolar disorders, anxiety disorders, personality disorders, psychotic disorders. You know, there's so many. To, um, that we can go on and on. Next slide, please. 
um, this one we call the word all. It's um, it's a head showing mental health statistics for individuals who experience who can be experiencing post traumatic stress disorders, suicidal thoughts, anxiety, and how children with anxiety are least likely to receive treatment. So here we have one in four are affected by mental illness. 8.6 million adults have suicidal uh, thoughts. Uh, suicide is the third lead leading cause of death and children with anxiety disorders least likely to, are to receive treatment and one in three experience post-traumatic stress disorders. People of color have less access to care. So there's a lot of things that, you know, um, that can be associated. Next slide. So I have learning disability, but I just want to touch on two. I think percentages have actually increased since we, we made this slide. I think right now we're looking at one in five, according to NAMI, National, uh, National Alliance on Mental Health Illnesses of individuals who have a mental health disability. And so this has increased a lot. And we saw this during the pandemic. Um, we've, we've also, fortunately, we too, we've seen a lot of the wellness programs at school, um, at, uh, elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools have improved and created opportunities for students. Um, and so it's, we are seeing a lot of the mental health. And I think the biggest thing too, is just a reminder, it's okay to talk about mental health. We need to be able to talk about these, um, these things that people are going through and, and help them. And so even if you're not having a conversation directly with somebody, it's okay to, to learn about mental health and be available to support folks and uh, attending trainings like these uh, for better awareness and uh, more resources but learning disabilities. So learning disabilities, I, this is a great one. I actually enjoy this. We worked, I worked really closely with students when I was at American River College as an um, instructional assistant to students with learning disabilities. Man, I think everything is close to home with me. So I was um, in school and high school, I played sports. I didn't have to worry too much about school because I was from a small town and we had a small community. Our sheriff was our football coach. Our basketball coach was the head of the fire department. So you can imagine, this was kind of, uh, what do they call Friday night lights. Um, so as when I finally got to college, I realized that school wasn't my strength. And it turned out that I, I uh, did test and did have a learning disability. So I learned um, really, or I learned many strategies to help myself and in the future help others. And so that's been really great as I was a counselor uh, for a long time. And it was, I was able to provide um, not advice, but um, strategies for individuals to consider. So people with uh, learning disabilities, they have a low, excuse me, they don't have a, a low average or a low IQ. They have a above or high a, a average IQ. You, you, um, it's not somebody, you're not thinking somebody who can't think is a person with disability, learning disability. Um, I think the strategies that I've had to develop um, have made me realize that I'm not bad. I can figure some things out and have to you know, work on my toes. Uh, distractions can be a real challenge for a person with a learning disability. Now, again, I'm speaking to some of the examples and experiences that, that we've learned, but that's not everybody that we're speaking to. Uh, it's not a cookie cutter. We don't have one size fits all for everybody, um, but a lot of the distractions could um, be, be a challenge for many folks. Um, reading, training, writing, if you can allow time, extra time or more time with um, with with those assignments for individuals, that's really helpful. Again, not every individual needs that. And an individual who has um, a requirement for that could ask. That's something that could be uh, spoken about and could be requested for that. Um, what's the best way to hear information? Mine might not always be um, reading everything out of a book or um, following things on a, re on a search through the internet or listening in a meet. I mean, I, there's several different ways that we learn. And so finding out what is the best way that a person should learn it's a really good challenge if individuals aren't aware of your, your best learning strategies, your best learning skills, something I would encourage you to do now because that's going to help you in everything you do. If, it, if you're a parent, if you're an employee, if you're um, you know, taking care of other situations, it's really good to know the best way you learn. Um, written instructions, information if needed, if that's a, a request of an individual. And then technology um, really could be helpful for individuals. I worked with an individual uh, as a counselor who had ADHD. He used his cell phone for everything. It had a calendar, it had a timer, it had all of his contact information, it had a place where he could store his notes. He knew um, anything you can imagine. If it was medication, he had uh, some. He had a, um, an alarm so that he could take his medication on time. Um, but regardless, allow the opportunity to use technology. And I think we're in a place now where we are taking advantage of technology more than maybe we had in the past. Um, 
And so I think that's good to, to learn disabilities. Okay, so here's a trick on it. Forgot about this guy. So this is an activity. So if you're here, if you're looking with us right now, try to tell me what that says. You can raise your hand, you can put it in the chat. We're gonna give you like 30 seconds or more. What does it look like it says? If you've been to one of our trainings before, you may know. Oh, all right. I love it. There we go. We see some, there we go. We see, wow, this is an incredible group. Can't trick you. Next slide. So yes, so for those individuals who were able to put that up there, the black cat sat on the hot tin roof. So there are several different types of uh, learning disabilities. We, um, we don't wanna focus or specify on one, but in some situations, individuals may see or may read things um, the way that we did here. And so you can see that that, stat, that challenge, that struggle, um, it's, it's real for those individuals. And so although we were able to see through this, think of the process, think of how you had to readjust your brain to get to there. And imagine that every single time that you're in a situation, you're learning something new, you're reading a new instruction or um, other, uh, other new learning things are coming up. So good job everyone on that activity. So I'm gonna take this one. This one is respiratory disability. So with this one, we wanna maintain good ventilation and indoor air quality, follow and enforce non-smoking, uh, follow and enforce no smoking, regulations, limit the use of strong fragrance body care products and cleaning products. I don't know about you, but there's certain items, um, fragrance items that really affect me, you know, that I can really be, um, get a, develop a really bad headache with such, well, just last week I was um, patronizing a store and some woman walked right by me. And when she did, she had this really strong odor, uh, strong odor, her fragrance was really strong. And so, when she walked by me, I had to turn my head around and I looked to see, oh my gosh, you know, who's wearing this? But within minutes later, I come to find that I ended up getting a really bad headache. And it's something that I've, that I've come to take consideration, you know, when I myself am putting on perfume or any kind of body fragrance, you know, always think about someone else because um, it may not feel like it or smell like it's strong to me, but it can affect someone in, the, in an adverse uh, way. Um, so always, and then be mindful of the foods that can cause allergic reactions, such as peanut, peanuts or eggs. Um, when our supervisor first started off um, in our office here at the Yuba City branch, I didn't know that she was allergic to citrus. Well, I wanted to do a potluck, and so I wanted to bring a, a fruit tray. And one of my coworkers had indicated that she, our boss, was allergic to um, to citrus, and so. I just thought, oh, great, you know, so I had to call um, Bel Air, who was making a fruit tray for me and tell them to cancel it. So, uh, because I had to take into consideration. So always keep in mind, be mindful of the foods that can cause allergic reactions, such as peanuts and eggs and other um, items. Next slide. So intellectual and developmental disabilities. Use clear sentences and concrete concepts. Treat as an adult and allow individuals to make decisions. Be, be patient, allow adequate time to complete tasks and make decisions and provide alternative formats. Allow time to, to adjust to change to an environment or routine. And here's a little a side note, intellectual and developmental disabilities vary in severity and type of disabilities. And Matt, I'll give this to you. There we go. There's that mute. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks, Joanne. Um, so uh, I'm going to take us the rest of the way. Uh, what do we want? We want allies. Uh, believe it or not, you uh, folks there at uh, Food and Ag, you are an ally of us, uh, of DORs already. We've worked cooperatively on some programs, and uh, I appreciate the support that uh, your department has shown us and uh, some of our participants. Uh, but a little bit about allies. Allies are people with disabilities in the workplace as well as supporters of people with disabilities in the workplace. Uh, despite non-discrimination rules and opportunities to request accommodations, most people with disabilities uh, do not discuss their situation at work. 
Um, so some thoughts on why, uh, you know, some participation from the audience. What are, what are some reasons we think that, you know, a folk, you know, person would not want to disclose? I think we got one uh, feeling different in any capacity is challenging. Exactly. We're worried about discrimination. That's another good point. All right. Yeah, those are some really good points that people are bringing. Stigma. Yes, there's a huge stigma associated with with people with disabilities. Uh, you know, and uh, oh, see, here's another one: not wanting to be vulnerable. That is a uh, that is a very good point too. You don't want to be, uh, you know, set apart from from someone, or, or from everyone else. Uh, worry about bullying too. Uh, and then privacy. Yeah, these are all really good points because, uh, you know, someone who has a disability, it's, you know, it's really personal to them and, and it is a part of, of, of who they are. Um, you know, not everyone is, is like myself who just loves talking about their own disability and, and, and letting people know about, uh, you know, challenges that I've gone through and, and how I break through those challenges. Um, you know, some people want to keep that really close to themselves. Uh, I think what's really important to, to, to create allies is to, to provide information, is, is to give information out there. And then everyone here who uh, is associated with the DAC, that's what it's all about. It's about talking about uh, people with disabilities, talking about disabilities, uh, and, and spreading awareness about that. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for your remarks. All right. And so what can you do as an ally? Uh, you can advocate for full inclusion in the workplace. Uh, you can serve as a caring and em empathetic listener, uh, raise awareness, attend events in support of and, and surrounding people with disabilities, uh, offer accommodation options, and ask people with disabilities what they need to do their best work. And then another side note about inclusiveness is, uh, you know, we, we want to we want to bring inclusiveness into the environment so we really don't have to talk about you know a, a certain person uh, who has a disability uh, you know we don't have to focus on a single individual or, or 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 talk about them when we're talking about everyone or every you know disability out there uh, that's a really great way to raise awareness and spread awareness in the workplace is, is to um you know not talk about a specific disability but maybe just talk about disabilities in general uh, and then you could be an ally in words, be conscious of language, uh, put the uh, person first uh, example is a person with a disability or with quadriplegia, or, you know, and not saying they're quadriplegic. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it seems like a really, it almost seems like a really silly thing just moving, you know, person in, 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 in front of, of, uh, of disability. Uh, but you know, we, we got to think about what are we focusing on. We're we need to focus on individuals and their skills and abilities, uh, not their disabilities. Uh, you know, the disability is just kind of an afterthought. Uh, it's something that, uh, you know, for for my perspective, it's 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 just something like hair color. Uh, that may be a bad example, but that's just one aspect of a person. Their hair color. Uh, it doesn't make them, you know, their you know the a person as a whole. Uh, and when in doubt, ask, start the conversation. It's a great way to, you know, to break through these barriers. It's just to, to ask if you don't know um, and show respect. Uh, showing respect is more important uh, than being PC or politically correct. All right, and I love this one, the platinum rule versus the golden rule. Uh, that is treat others as they want to be treated. Uh, I think that's a really important thing. Uh, it's not really about yourself. It's about other people uh, and how they would like to be treated. And again, it's okay to ask. Uh, it, there is no greater way to learn about uh, someone's disability or how you can help them by starting a conversation about that. Um, and then remember what, what a difference of voice can make. Uh, so this brings us to the end. There's some resources here. We're going to share this PowerPoint uh, so you can go ahead and empower yourselves with information and uh, go through these resources uh, for uh, for job ac reasonable accommodations. I, I got to promote Jan, uh, askjan.org. They've been a great resource to us. Uh, and, you know, it's just a wealth of information uh, for employers and for uh, employees. Uh, it, it's It's just a really great resource. 
And we have some acknowledgement, acknowledgements. This uh, PowerPoint presentation was was brought together uh, through a, a lot of different sources, a lot of contributors to the, to this uh, information here. And lastly, I uh, just want to thank you. I want to thank uh, California Department of Food and Ag again for being an ally of ours, even if you didn't know it. Um, but yeah, if you uh, need any information or if you'd like to uh, get any information on any of this, uh, uh, you know, anything we've covered today, uh, you know, feel free to either contact the workforce development uh, uh, unit. Uh, but I believe you guys have a flyer with all of our information on it. So uh, please come to us. Uh, we, we could be a resource for you. Uh, and, you know, if you just want to say hi, that's great, too. <laughs> um, and then I get, if we have some questions. We can go over some questions. Let's uh, stop the PowerPoint and open it up uh, to, to some questions. Uh, Matt, can we go back to the earlier one from, uh, let's see. Ronald. Yes. I'm scrolling through. <laughs> I don't see it actually. So Ronald asked, I, or commented, I speak fast. If I purposely try to speak slower, would that be considered insensitive? Well, I, I think I can take that one. I, I think it really depends on, uh, on the person you're speaking to. Uh, is, is it, uh, are you speaking slower because it's, you know, they need to take in the information, uh, you know, uh, at that pace? Uh, when we're in, when we're you know, teleconferencing using Zoom or Teams, uh, and there's someone who is deaf and hard of hearing and uses an interpreter uh, that signs, uh, it's actually really important for you to try to speak slower because that interpreter, uh, you know, needs processing time for them to get the information out to the you know, individual who is uh, deaf and hard of hearing, and then likewise uh, for communication. I am just, I'm actually really bad during meetings. I get really excited uh, on some of the topics that we work on. And I, I have a habit of, of uh, talking over uh, our, a colleague of ours who, who is deaf and uses an interpreter. Uh, but that's something that's, that, you know, if you make a conscious effort because of a, of a need, I don't think uh, that's going to be insensitive at all. Uh, and sometimes it's it's really necessary. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, just to reinforce the fact that you're asking that question makes us think that you're not insensitive and you're trying to be more right. aware. And so we appreciate that on the, on the informed side, because that's our goal is to provide as much information that we can to help individuals make an informed choice and be more aware of collaborating, um, including individuals with disabilities. Yeah. And uh, any other questions? It's It was really difficult for me to look at the chat while I was presenting. Matt, we have a question that came through from Rachel. When getting eye level with someone in a wheelchair, is it best to look for a seat or bend down? Uh, look for a seat. Be comfortable as, you know, while, while you're engaging in a conversation. Uh, you know, it just takes a second to, to pull up a seat or find a spare chair. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't put yourself out of comfort unless that's what you're, you know, what you like. But I would suggest just pulling a chair. Uh, you know, that's that's uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, looks like we have a hand raise. Uh, this um, is Umesh. I just have a question about the service animal. Mm -hmm. Does it mean only dogs, or can it be any animal? And the reason I ask is like, if you remember a few years back people were coming on the airplanes with all sorts of animals, right? There's somebody brought a peacock, I think, or a rabbit, whatever. Right. So when we say service animal, what are we referring to? Well, a, a service animal is, is uh, you know, an animal that performs a function for a person with a disability. Uh, you know, we're often, you know, we, we see dogs most often because uh, they're easily trained. Uh, as far as other service animals, I, I have to admit, I don't have a really big knowledge base on that one. Uh, maybe one of the one of my colleagues can can uh, take it from there. Uh, but the the idea the the main thing is that a service animal does perform a function for that person. Um, yeah. So. Hey Umesh, this is Justin. I'm uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the chief of civil rights for CDFA. 
Um, we take service animal requests on a case by case basis, uh, dependent on what the doctor's note and the restrictions are for that particular person. Generally, most uh, service animals that are recognized that we have seen have been dogs. Um, and there can be, there, there might be an exception for miniature horses as well, because those are recognized by the law. Um, emotional service animals are a little bit different, um, but again, those are case by case basis, uh, depending on the request for the situation and the restrictions for the person. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Justin. I actually learned something too. <laughs> service horse. That's that's interesting. All right. Uh, so, does anyone uh, pick out anything from the chat or? Um, yeah, anybody have any questions uh, for us here? Yeah, thank uh, you so much. I have a question about the videos. I, I believe we already have links to the videos. Is that correct? I think we had them emailed um, to us, but is that the, what we had emailed? So we can share it with those that were not. The video, the, um, uh, the Bob video, is that what you're referring uh -huh. to? Yes. Yeah, we usually do send that out. And if uh, okay. you were sent a link to a video, it's, it's most likely that one. Or oh. it could be a presentation, the same presentation done by our workforce development uh, unit. All right. And do we have permission to post that on our website so we can share with our staff? Um, yeah, I, I will go ahead and give permission, my permission to, to do that. To do that. Um, Joanne and Spencer, you, are you guys okay with that being published? Yeah, that's fine. Right. It is part of. Yeah, I thought I'd ask because we didn't. I, I don't think we discussed it, or I, I didn't mention that to to the team. So I think we're good. Any other questions you guys may have for us? We have a hand up by Jessica Billingsley. I think that's a clap. So I think she's <laughs> very happy with what we yeah, put on today. You guys. Thank, you, <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank oh, yeah. You. Thanks for having us. Uh, well, I guess that'll do it for, for DOR. Uh, I guess, Peggy, if you have any, have any closing remarks for that, the meeting. That is it. Thank you. Once again, if there are any further questions and you don't want to put it out there, feel free to send it to me via email. My email was on the flyer. Um, and then I will get it, send that over to Matt and his group so we can get answers. Um, thank you, Matt and Spencer and Joanne for taking time for to enlighten us. It's a wonderful presentation. All right, you're very welcome. Thanks. All right, thank you. Bye everyone.